What color was Adam? In modern times, we hear arguments he was white, others he was black. But the one missing argument is the one we believe far more logical and supported by scripture and even science. No, this video is not about race. We could care less about race. It's about restoring what the word says and exposing what it doesn't say because so many have gone nuts on this topic far from scripture. Let's fix this now. Welcome to 100 Clues. The Philippines is the ancient land of gold known as Ophir in the Bible and history. No, it's no fable, and this has already been proven in full in the God Culture Solomon's Gold series. At the request of many viewers, we have pulled out 100 compelling clues, really proofs or evidences from this research in which we will highlight briefs of the most compelling points, and yes, there are over 100. These videos are for those who have not had time to watch Solomon's Gold series. Great for small groups and churches and schools, and easy to share to friends and family, especially skeptics. This brief video cannot replace that 50 video series, nor prove the way that it does as it is a researcher's journey, but this will be very effective nonetheless. So go there for full evidence, but now, part 44 of our series, 100 Clues, The Philippines is Ophir, one clue at a time. Before we start, let's deal with the elephant in the room. The difference in DNA from one end of the spectrum of humans to the other is all of 0.04%. That's it. In other words, this nonsense of the media trying to paint the human race as anything but one race is ludicrous and loaded with propaganda. We are all one race. We are all brown. Just different shades based on the amount of melanin in our skin. That's it, really. Having said that, there is a tone from our beginnings from Adam that can be identified in scripture and science, really. Are we crazy to go here? Not at all, because we can prove our position. See what you think. Also, some calling themselves scientists have actually made the claim that this chimp is 99% similar to us humans. Oh, what they forget to mention in their so-called science is that they actually abandon over one billion lines of DNA code in this chimpanzee, which they cannot explain and do not understand. Now, obviously, that code is not human, or they would be able to identify it, wouldn't they? Yes. Thus, this is fraud, and the closest this chimp is to this baby is about 83%, perhaps. That's not a little margin of error. It is complete and utter fraud. The Bible defines us humans as a kind, and chimps and monkeys are a different kind because we cannot have children with them, and the reproductive limit is what defines the difference between kinds. As Genesis is clear in the creation account, we reproduce after our kinds over and over and over it says that now let's go right to the scripture which tells us exactly what color adam was here we go genesis 2 7 and the lord god yahuwah that's actually y-h-w-h in scripture yahuwah formed man of the dust of the ground, in Hebrew, Adama, Adam and Yah, isn't that cool? And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. This word for ground, Adama, means soil, from its general redness. See, it is a color, red. Let's explore this further, so we can fully understand it. Jacinius also identifies Adama as red or tarnish. Eberim Publications, a very well-respected Jewish dictionary and concordance, 
really nails Adama down in its many forms, and all as red. Red ground, earth, from the root dam, to produce or to be red. It's right there in his name. Yep, Adam was made of red soil, thus red in color. Red is the first color a baby learns to see, and red or ruddy, see, ruddy is red, is indeed the color of rudiment. See, ruddy, rudiment is red. As a verb, Adam means to be red. As an adjective, Adam means red. As a noun, Odam denotes a ruddy or red gem, possibly quartz. As a noun, Edom denotes a kind of red stew. Some then assume that Esau, because he's the origin of the word Edom or the Edomites, that Esau must be red. But Esau doesn't mean red. Edom means red, and it's after the stew that Jacob made for Esau. That's how it gets into that story. Did he have red hair? Maybe, but doubtfully. Very doubtfully. As an adjective, it means reddish. Then again, as an added adjective, it means red or ruddy. So can we all take a hint here? The soil Adam was made from was red. And he was, in the skin tone, red. In verb, adverb, noun, etc. Adjective, all of it. So this is always associated with red. What does this mean? Well, history tells us a red skin is known as a North American or Native American Indian. Now, I know well what this means because my grandfather, great-grandfather, was 100% Native American Indian. And even my grandmother was dark-skinned. In fact, my Filipino wife met her and thought for sure she was a Filipina. The similarities are uncanny. But that's another topic. Red skin is dark brown in tone. It is not white and it is not black. And there is a reason for that even scientifically as neither of those extremes would actually work as the origin of skin tone for mankind scientifically. We'll get there. King David was described in 1 Samuel twice as ruddy. Now, we just covered that. We learned that ruddy is red. David was red-skinned, as are most Hebrews, though not all. Some are indeed black. Song of Solomon is used to claim Solomon was black, in fact. Yet, they just aren't reading. That's Solomon's first wife, the Egyptian, who in fact was black, writing at first as if Solomon is writing here, we have a major problem because it says, let him kiss me. Uh, I hope that's not Solomon. No, Solomon's not writing that. That's his wife writing. And she says that she is black and comely. And she's a very beautiful black Egyptian woman indeed. Now, Solomon describes her in detail and she's very beautiful. He thought so. However, Solomon is then described in many ways, but he is called white and ruddy, or red, and this is further explained when she then describes specifically his countenance. That's a word for skin tone specifically. His countenance was as the cedars of Lebanon. Pictured below, there is a medium brown or red skin tone for the cedars of Lebanon, just as his father David and just as Adam, in fact. In fact, there are many hieroglyphs in Egypt of the slaves in the time of Israel's exodus, and they are two different skin tones in color, one medium brown or red, and the other is black. Now Judah married Shua the Canaanite, and Moses is an Ethiopian, in fact, so later you'll find uh, even more. Thus, there are definitely darker black tones mixed into the Israelites, again, especially in Judah and some of the Levites. 
What they definitely are not in all of history, sorry, is white. As we've never seen one hieroglyph ever depicting a white rabbi with a long beard slaving on bricks with a sunburn. You will never find one which tells us much about our modern paradigm. Many things need to be corrected, and we do this in our Lost Tribes series. If you haven't seen that, go watch. Also, Egyptians are depicted on these hieroglyphs as the same, medium brown or red, and black as well. This is why Abraham, Joseph, and Moses were all mistaken as Egyptians. Imagine Joseph's white rabbi-looking brothers, if that were true, coming before the Egyptian leader Joseph, the white rabbi-looking dude, and not even recognizing that he was white like them. That's because none of them were white. There's no such history to ever support that. Now, let's look at the science behind this from two scientists, very recently, in fact, in 2019. So we have to ask the next question. What would Adam and Eve have looked like? Would it have been white? Would it have been black? Would they have been somewhere in between? Actually, I believe that they would have been somewhere in between. Probably. I think this skin color, actually that, that place on the chart I showed you where there's no variation, that's a mutation. I have a broken gene. I can't produce melanin. I don't think they were white. Nor do I think that they were the darkest that people can be. And if we look at the distribution of skin color around the world, we see that, you know, somewhere around where the Tower of Babel would have been, there's kind of a lot of middle-toned skin colors. My first approximation is they probably had middle-toned skin and then add population bottlenecks and some mutations on top of that to the skin color genes. And it would not take long at all to get the different colorations of people that we see around the world. In fact, it would be easier to move both ways to darker and lighter from the middle yes. than it would if you started at one end. It would happen more quickly, probably. Here it is with the skin color. We basically all have the same skin color, brown. It's just a question of how much brown. There's a pigment called melanin. There's a couple different forms of it, but one of the forms is basically a, a sort of a gray pigment. And if you have a lot, if you have these genes up in the upper uh, left, capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B, then you're, you'll have a, you'll, your body will produce a lot of melanin or, and, or, and it'll spread it out over the skin. And so you have very dark, complected skin. If you have the, uh, the lowercase a, like in the lower, the lower right box, then you have very light colored skin. Now, if somebody down in this box, down here on the lower right, if they get married to somebody in that box, their kids are going to be in that box, right? Because the only letters are lowercase. That's the only possibility. And likewise, if somebody in the upper uh, left box gets married to somebody in the upper left box, their kids are going to be in that box. But if you're off axis, if you're on the, uh, on the diagonal there where you have, let's say, the upper right, where you have capital A, lowercase a, capital B, lowercase b, and they get married to somebody in that box, their kids could be any shade, couldn't they? Because they have all the letters available. And so we think probably Adam and Eve had a middle brown skin color, probably the combination in the upper right there. There's other ways to do it, but that's one way that uh, that could happen. And so, you know, they, they wouldn't both be very light complected because then you'd never have the, the darker colors. And so um, this, this accounts for how we have the different variations that we see in human beings today. In the first video, Dr. Robert Carter affirms that scientifically speaking, Adam was medium-toned, brown, or red-skinned, just as we found in Scripture. It all comes full circle. And Dr. Lyle agrees in the second video. As mankind has developed to extremes, white and black in skin tone, it does not serve to differentiate them as different races even. It is a natural occurrence, and frankly, we are all genetically losing information from Adam's days. He was pure and lived 900 plus years. We cannot do that. But we are all one, all brown, as Dr. Lyle mentioned. We know there's a movement out there that tries to claim all Hebrews are black, but there's no biblical support for that. Watch our Lost Tribe series, we prove it. Even the verse in Revelation in which Messiah is described in heavenly anointing as glowing like brass, not black, as it exits the furnace, which is glowing, not black. And then 
in the next sentence, they totally overlook this, his countenance, hello, that skin tone, is described as glowing like the sun at its peak. That's not black. It's glowing in heavenly anointing. And how dare anyone take that away from that passage and mess it up so poorly? There is no need to force this. Some of the lost tribes of Israel were certainly indeed black and migrated into Central Africa. We prove that. But only a few of the tribes. Pretty much just the southern kingdom and not even all of them. We prove that in our Lost Tribes series. And in the second video, Dr. Lyle says the same. Science proves Adam and Eve were a medium brown tone or red skinned in the middle. Again, if either extreme, the science just doesn't work. Adam and Eve were red skinned or medium brown. The same as the Filipino or the Native American Indian or similar. I'm sure we'll get some racist comments on this, but this isn't about race. As first, we are all only one race, the human race. This is how Yahuwah has always viewed mankind. It is an evil structure that desires to divide and conquer us all based on race and sex and economic status and other such markers of ridiculous stature. These are the behaviors of the colonial conquerors who carried out Satan's fruits. Come on, we can judge their fruits. Go back and look. They steal, they kill, and they destroy everywhere they go. In fact, later we even find an even worse evil that we call communism in China and Russia. Based on evolution, the survival of the fittest, they murdered over 140 million of their own people. Why? Well, those were considered and branded inferior or less evolved species. The same with Native Americans and Filipinos who were branded as a lesser people or savages. And then all the evil could be justified. No, it couldn't. But somehow they got away with it for a while, didn't they? There was never any justification for that. And African slavery, all of it on steroids. These even pawns of the prince demon Gog, who rules the west and central areas of Europe, according to scripture. Tubal and Meshach. Look it up. That's where they are. The Book of Jubilees maps those out very specifically. Those areas are not in Russia or the Russian steppes. They are West and Central Europe, and they will be judged for their behavior. But as for Adam, he was red or medium brown in skin tone. And there you have it. As we keep saying and supporting over and over again, there is no debating the Philippines is the land of gold in all of history. It is time this knowledge be restored. For those about to comment in ignorance, yep, we always get them. We dare you to watch Solomon's Gold series by The God Culture, the original channel, to prove the Philippines is in fact Ophir. Even here, we are breaking these into sound bites and clear points, but watch how all 100 clues tie together. And this series will blow you away. Thank you for watching 100 Clues. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell and like us on our new Facebook, The God Culture Space hyphen Space Original. If you wish to skip ahead, go to The God Culture YouTube channel and watch our Solomon's Gold series in English and also now in Tagalog. There will be a link on the next screen. We can know this truth and be confident this belongs to the Philippines and no one can disprove it. Until next time.